come to me and tell me. They haven't been in the office yet. They must not be quite ready to break ground. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Kelly. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank Representative Vic for voting against the gas tax increase. And I cannot adequately express my disappointment in you, Senator, for pledging as you ran for election to oppose any gas tax or advocating increase. <coughs> and then when the time came, you voted for gas tax. So the question becomes, when do we believe you? You stand there and you say whatever it is you say, but to get elected, you said what we wanted to hear. And when crunch time came, that is what happened. How do we believe you? You like hold up a sign that says, this time I'm telling the truth. Next time, maybe not so much because circumstances change. Not when you give your word, they don't. And you don't hear soliloquy there? I have a question. So, I have a question. Um, so you are absolutely right. I put that on my website, and I regret allowing that to be put on my website. Um, but I did so at that time absolutely believing that. In my political naivete, I thought that I would be able to go to Olympia and get everything my own way, and that I would never have to uh, compromise on anything. And then I became politically mature. So I was in a situation as the head vote counter for my caucus and for the Senate of knowing that the transportation package was going to pass, that the people of my district were going to be paying 100% of that tax, and if I voted no, they would get 0% of the projects. So for me, I had to boil it down to a business decision. I had to say, do the people of my district want to pay a bunch of money and get nothing, or do they want to pay a bunch of money and get something? And so I decided that probably after having three town halls, meeting with almost 300 people, and having only one constituent tell me that that would not be the case, I made the call that I thought was right and I thought was best. In my political maturity, I see myself saying, you know what, I'm not going to make promises that I don't intend to keep. And so um, that's where I stand today. The bottom line is, for me, I got over $106 million in projects for my district that represent safety, um, that represent grade separations from railroad, that um, represent congestion relief, that represent uh, freight mobility. So, uh, additionally, I got some money for our state troopers who are the lowest paid policing agency in the state. Um, was it perfect? No. Had I not been the only vote from the 18th, I think we could have gotten about triple the money, but I was the only vote, and I did the best that I could do with what I was given to work with. Um, finally, the environmental demands um, of the low carbon fuel standard, which were range according to the governor's own clue report, his climate change uh, report, ranged from a dollar to a dollar sixty-eight per gallon none of which would be spent on roads. They would go to the general fund to be spent however the legislature chose. Our gas tax right now goes to the 18th Amendment fund and can only be used for transportation. So to my way of thinking, when I did the math and I thought, well, uh, my people can pay $700 million in gas tax, get some money back, see some safety projects, or they can pay seven billion and see nothing. Um, to me, it ended up being a business decision. It was very hard because I am opposed. You can tell by standing here listening to me. If I'm going to um, spend money, it's going to be money that does good. It's going to be. Um, it's a tough decision to want to raise taxes. 
If anyone in this room is upset about an increase in the gas tax, you're not wrong. I don't begrudge you any of that. I don't want to pay a gas tax. My household voted no on the recent ballot language because we don't want to pay a gas tax. But the reality is, until we build self-repairing roads, we're going to have to pay for it somehow. In our transportation package, we got reforms, about a half billion in sales tax so that um, so that the state is no longer charging itself sales tax on its transportation projects. Um, so for me, uh, you're right. I should have never said it, and I regret saying it. So I think the question, though, with all due respect, was was going forward, from this point forward, how do we evaluate when you're making a commitment in a campaign cycle? How do we evaluate which statements we can take to the bank and which statements are going to be subject to circumstance so in the future? So any of you in this room who I have made a commitment to or a deal with, uh, raise your hand if I've broken it. How many made a deal? One, two, three. Now, you know what? Five. So here's the reality. You can watch by my actions. I've held firm to my principles and my beliefs. I made a hard decision. I'd make the same decision today because nothing has changed. They had the votes without me. And I knew that because I was the head vote counter. So the you can you can hammer on this all you want, you can do the inspection and and look and see, but I've held true to my principles. My constituents didn't send me to Olympia to be a pansy and just say no. My constituents sent me to do the hard work and make a decision, and that's what I did. Anybody can stick their finger in the air and go, hmm, what should I do here? This but I didn't do it. This constituent sent you there to do the work. The hard decision was the no vote. The easy no, decision the was, easy decision, the easy decision easy was to say yes and bring money back to those. Easy for me to say no. Easy. Easy.